All right. We are live with little fanfare and little forewarning. We're live. So, Chiefs vlog. Wanted to pop in. It's all things gaming. The first thing I wanted to cover, which is kind of in the note, in the notes, not in the no, but in the notes, is that John Kranz is going to come on from Con Sim World. He will be on the 23rd. So, of course, I've got Trevor Just came on as a guest ham tagger. Boom, there's Trevor right there. Look at that. <laughs> Look at this, a freaking reminder. He must be learning. Maybe. Maybe Trevor. So Trevor's going to be back for the ham tag guest fans segment on games you play with your kids. And uh, we're going to do that Saturday at the 16th. But John Kranz from Consim World, hello, Consim World, is going to come on on the 23rd. Uh, also does a lot of development, or it's beyond development, really, with Compass Games. I almost said Compass Box. Compass Box is a whiskey distributor, distiller, mixer, distributor out of uh, London. So that would be totally different. But um, we'll have John on. And uh, they've done some new things with Consim World. I don't know what it's called. Is it? It's it's like a new interface. And um, Hamtag or Bonding with Board Games has a group there. And I'm going to be figuring out how I'm going to properly use that. Let me respond to Trevor. Yes, Trevor. Ellipsis. Thank you. I love the ellipsis. I got to tell you, one of my favorites. <laughs> so, um, let me plug a book while I'm here. Matthew McConaughey's Green Lights. I'm just telling you. Um, if you go to Audible, you can hear him read it. Um, uh, I'm not through with it yet, so I can't like give you a review of it. But uh, first of all. The titles, uh, I've actually commented, first of all, I was like, wow, I've used that. I, I will say I'm having a green light day. I'm a little irritated because I can see the leg of my other tripod from my other camera back there. Sorry, now I've pointed it out to you. But when I'm having a green light day, imagine when you're headed toward that intersection, the one that you can never get through, the busy one, and it's green, and you go right on through. And you hit another one, right on through. That is a green light day. Everything just flows. Everything works. Everything you think will be a stumbling block is not. And um, hold on. I got to hit boom. Um, and his book is called Green Lights. So uh, he'll reference how sometimes you're going to have stoplights and yellow lights, but, you know, it's all about moving forward. So. Check that out. Again, I can't give you a review on it yet. I've just kind of just started, but uh, it, it it's very interesting. I like his mode of thinking. I like the fact that he lives in Texas rather than in, um, well, he's gotten himself out of the kind of the confining thinking space. We've known that forever. He goes on uh, motorhome trips. He goes on walkabouts in Africa. I mean, it's phenomenal. So, Nuno is in. Thank you. Let's see. Trevor Just is green lighting like gaslighting. You know, I don't even, I keep hearing gaslighting, but I don't know if I've heard a great explanation of it. But no, you've heard what I think of green lighting. Vexed, F E, yay. I actually make one of these early. Cool. I'm glad you guys are piling in. Um, you know what? Yes, good. I almost had to make sure I didn't go up on the Scotch Test Live side. Trevor Just, Texas rather than California. Yeah, Trevor. Yeah. He lives in Texas rather than California. That is a little bit odd as an actor. You know, um, I've known some, uh, not known, known of some actors that have done the same. Tom D is in. Hi, Chief. Ham tag. Ham tag. Uh, we're feeding the niche, guys. Feeding the niche. This is out of blue. Li lives are freaking. Nuno. Yeah, it's out of the blue. Out of the blue. I felt the need. I was actually filming some whiskey shows. Um, I may pull one over. Uh, I don't know if anybody here likes whiskey, but in Texas, hello, Trevor, Iron Root. 
Iron Root sent a, sent a bunch of samples. We've been there. We've met one of uh, Nancy the Nose, who actually lives in Berkeley, California, who's their uh, master blender, taster, expert. And uh, Iron Root does some amazing, I mean, amazing things. So I've just shot a couple reviews of that. And I thought, you know what? I need to come up on the board game side as well. Whiskey Central, speaking of whiskey, look at that name. And by the way, for those that don't know, when you don't have the E, um, that's generally scotch. And if you have the E, although it could be Ireland and some other things, basically you don't worry about the E or the lack of the E. Whiskey's whiskey, kind of. <laughs> Trevor says, Judd told me I needed to require to require some hooch for ham tagging. Sure. If you can, I don't know how California is set up, but if you have, um, shoot, it's a giant warehouse. I can't remember. It'll come to me. Um, you can get some iron root that way. Otherwise, you got to get it in Texas. But Texas is worth visiting. Maybe if we ever get to go to a con again, maybe at BGG. Matt Curiosities is in. Just dropped Twitter and got on the other site. That's being blackballed. He's talking about Parlor. Parlor's, I think Parlor's more about anti-competition. Uh, uh, that has been interesting. I'm all about free competition. So, Tom, you're awesome. We should game. <laughs> So I'm not even, let's see, Tom D. Hi, Trevor. You're about 20 minutes away. That's what that was. So we've got whiskey talk. We've got game talk. Uh, we've got con sim world talk. John Kranz will be on on the 23rd. Trevor Just, guest host, will be back um, for the fan follow-up. Matt Curiosities. I'm going to tell you, Matt, if you're interested, Send me an email. This is for you, Matt, at Bart at Scotch Test Dummies, um, dot com, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Um, let me know if that doesn't work, but I believe that is it. Sorry. Um, so you said just being on the business card for Scotch Test Dummies. Send that to me because that is a separate email that I do get. It's more of video related. But Matt, if you're interested, send me an email. We'll chat. I might have said that to Trevor just once. We'll see. Um, let's see here. Um, okay, we've got some different talks. So I don't put the uh, the political spin in anything I do. This is all about games and occasionally about whiskey. Um, and we will stick to that. I will tell you part of the other topic. Let me get off of this and off of that is you'll notice the photo seems a little bit odd and retro and kind of watercolor esque Rocky Mountain Folio game. So first of all, that is from a company called the Pit of Infinite Shadow. Hello. Um, and what is it? Nate Hayden is the designer. I think I got that right. Or Nathan or Nathaniel Hayden. He also did um, a boxed version of a very unique game that I messed around with, but I've yet to play. I can't remember the name of it. It's also from them, but you can't get it now. It's all about like mushroom, a mushroom trip and, and following a shaman. And I'm blanking on the name of it. Someone in here will know. Um, it's no longer currently available, but... So the Pit of Infinite Shadow is a place where you can go get games. And there are some, it's like indie video gaming, indie board gaming is how I like to describe it. And they had Rocky Mountain Folio game. And it said it's kind of like Source of the Nile, which is an old Avalon Hill game that I've been wanting to get a hold of, but it's a little pricey. If anybody wants to let one go for not $80, let me know. I'm very patient. I have way more games that I can play. So I've been looking for one that I can get. Um, but it's got this adventure kind of thing to it, but Rocky mountain man, I think that's it. Yes. Rocky mountain man first harkens back to me growing up in the mountains of Colorado, evergreen, Colorado near Conifer to be specific. You might even say Aspen park, but, um, the other thing it harkens to is he says, Nate Hayden, 
Um, it's like, or it's, it's in the style of source of the Nile, but you use crayons and you draw on the map. And I was like, I gotta have this, gotta have it. I went and ordered it. It's 25 bucks. <laughs> okay. But I had to have it. What does Trevor say? Pit of infinite shadows sounds like a place I'll need to hit up, uh, the, uh, confessional on Sunday. Yes. And they've got uh, what they had a hit game cave. What was it? Cave. I want to say cave troll, but I'm sure I'm wrong there. Um, what is Trevor saying here? Okay, Bart, what is your favorite game about making booze? Uh, viticulture, uh, Vinos, Brewmasters. You know, I have viticulture. And then I got so confused because then they had like the viticulture uh, collector's edition. And then they had like the viticulture chest and then they had the viticulture something else. And then this, and I was like, what the heck? And I've got the wrong one, got the wrong one. It's not as good. <laughs> I'm sure it's still as good, but it's, or good. I don't know. And I haven't been able to play it. I, I kind of got confused quite honestly. Um, and I love worker placement. It's one of my favorite. It is probably my favorite Euro mechanic other than Kinesia's bidding and alchemy that Kinesia does where the game is way more than what you think it is when it works, when it works. Um, <laughs> Tom D. Um, let's see, Trevor. Okay. Facebook works too. I've seen you there. Okay. That's you guys chatting back and forth. I am more. Okay. There we go. We got that. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I think we're doing good. I think we're doing good. So, Rocky Mountain Man. First of all, I've read a lot of historical novels on kind of, uh, well, not kind of, the mountain men. Um, uh, Louis L'Amour was one of the first um, with his Sackett series. It starts with some of that. And it always interested me how, you know, a troop or a couple guys would just hike west just move into the West and, and survive and thrive and, and make it their way. And I don't know if this game's going to have that feel or not, but I love this whole idea of an indie board game thing going on. And uh, so I jumped on it. I will do an unboxing when it arrives. And then hopefully I showed it to my wife and said, look, we get to use crayons. And she was like, what? <laughs> I said, I don't know. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be good. So we'll see how that goes. Like I said, I love the indie. I've got to remember. Anybody can remember this, uh, this acid tripping game. I had to have it. The board unfolds kind of, you unfold different sections as you're experiencing and you can use 3d glasses. I have it. It's right over there. I made 500 copies. Um, I went through the rules and was like, I'm a little confused. And then I think life got busy. So we're going to talk about those things today and whatever you guys want to bring up. Um, let me highlight that. Boom. Of course, Trevor will be with me on Saturday as we do the uh, ham tag guest version of games that you play with your kids. I love that. Uh, I really found that to be a, a great episode. Thank you, Trevor, for joining me. And, uh, you know, bringing, uh, bringing new people into the hobby of gaming, first of all, I think is great. Opening the door to the historical gaming, whether that's um, war gaming or whether that's founding fathers or what Academy Games has done with some of their 1775 and stuff like that, um, I just think is immensely important and still play. So... Um, you know, I feel like some things don't get taught, um, like I wish they were taught in school. Matter of fact, I just read a deal where there's some movements against some of the classics. And I was like, what? Um, but then I remember when I was in school, I didn't want to read the classics, but I felt like I should. And I, I actually dodged a teacher once in high school. He was phenomenal phenomenal teacher. Everybody that had him loved him, but he really kept the pressure on you. And I liked lit. I was a reader even way back then. 
And I was always disappointed that I intentionally dodged this teacher. And he was so good. He got hired. Forget where he went. I think he went on. It wasn't even college. It was some other kind of thing he did. It was, he was supposedly awesome. I missed it. Went to Evergreen High School and I missed it. And, um, but I don't know. I heard Dante's Inferno was even on there. And here's a funny story. I currently or recently picked that up and my wife and I are actually, I'm reading it out loud. She wanted to read it as well. So we do it as this couple's thing. Wow. Don't you want to be at the brunching house while I read Dante's Inferno out loud for all of us to hear? Doesn't that sound fun? Actually, yes. Uh, let's see. What, what is Trevor saying? What are you saying? The department of education needs help. <laughs> I will say this. I believe education always starts at the home. So, um, I'll just leave it there. Actually, education is really good where I live. I actually built in an area designed for the public education that reminded me of where I grew up. My public education in the mountains of Colorado was phenomenal. Uh, Tom D., Wow. Nice. I'll be sure to watch if at all possible, make it possible, but you can always watch and post. What is this? It's kind of clipped off there. What is that? Elbow cough. Got it. Elbow cough. <laughs> um, let's see. So what else is going on? Let me bring over. So one other thing, this will be a show crossover. Um, so uh, cool barrels. This is a, a Glen Rothis or clear cool bottles. This is a Glen Rothis bottle. I love their bottles. They remind me of like some kind of old style hand grenade or something. I don't know. I love their bottle style so that when I finish a bottle of these, who knows how many of those have been, I will clean off the label and on my show, Scotch Test Dummies, we will do crazy blind like 16 bottle shootouts. And when we're done with those, all the samples that are left over from the shootout, which are significant, um, my co-host Scott and I will pour into two different bottles and then we will keep them. And it's now its own unique blended whiskey. This is from a 2020 bourbon barrel proof shootout we did. And what it allows me to do is go back and sample something you can never buy in the store. Now, you don't want too many samples of this because they're high proof and they will knock you for a loop. But I'm going to enjoy that while we're here along with some water. If anybody likes whiskey or feels like even learning something about whiskey, we do it unpretentiously. Go to scotchtestdummies.com. Sorry, that's our website. Just go to Scotch Test Dummies on YouTube. I will tell you that if you want a coin that I cannot show you now, it's our salute to 2020, and I do mean salute. And uh, you can get that coin. It's limited. And uh, that you would have to go to scotchtestdummies.com and go to our merch site if you want a very cool, it's like a poker chip, but it's a challenge coin that's unique to police. Police departments and military have a lot of uh, challenge coins that kind of speak of events or operations or momentous things that happened. And with both my co-host on the Whiskey Channel and I getting COVID separately, we didn't infect each other. We're not that close. Um, we decided to commemorate 2020 with a final salute. Hello. Let's see. Glowing Turtle is in. Good day. Have you ever played Barbarian Prince? I have not Glowing Turtle. Let me highlight that. I love your avatar. Um, Barbarian Prince. I've got a whole bunch of Conan stuff. But that's more like uh, the Barbarian King. So uh, I will look at that. What else has come in? Tom D., what does he say? By salute. Do you mean this social finger, middle finger, laugh out loud? I do, sir. I do. And those coins, those challenge coins were selling like hotcakes. On our whiskey channel, we have these challenge coins that commemorate different, uh, well, really, we just go through, we're on like five different or fifth coin. But uh, we wanted to do a special one for 2020. If you're interested, I'm just telling you, go to scotchdesdubbies.com and go to the merch site and you will see them. Uh, we generally don't show them on the channel. <laughs> just, But if you don't want to see the... Uh, the it's in the style of Clyde from um 
every which way but loose. <laughs> it's the 1970s lone soldier, is like I is what I like to say. Um, it's Janis Joplin style. Nuno Luca, Nuno Nuno. You will uh, let me highlight it. Uh, you will end creating a group of drunk board gamers in this in these streams. Um, yes, although when I sip, when you sip at this level, it's usually like half an ounce, and I will take an hour to sip that half ounce. So that's one of the nice things I'll tell you about whiskey is it actually makes you slow down. And if you're going to experience it, you really sip it slow and just kind of take it in. It's actually very complimentary for board games. So um, Trevor, so Bart, uh, with you almost retired, yes, five years, maybe six, could go seven. If I pushed it, seven and a half. You almost retired. You have board game channel and whiskey. So what other hobby do you have that we might see another channel? You know, I don't know. Um, you know, I don't know. The, the only thing my co-host on the whiskey side, he was my very first partner on the police department way back in 1995, maybe early 96. Um, he's a Lieutenant. He's been a uh, head of the bomb squad. He was a team leader on the SWAT team. Um, uh, great guy. If you watch the Scott show, you know, him as uh Scott and, um, we've joked around that he and I could do breakdowns of like, uh, uh, I would love to do videos of the weird crimes of shoplifting. They're just so brazen and stupid. Usually I think we could have a, I teased him once where we were talking, we could have a, a channel on, uh, like shoplifter idiocy and just get videos from businesses and highlight the different dumb shoplifting that goes on, especially with all the cameras. And I said, it would probably be a runaway hit. Don't put that out. Don't put that out. That's our idea. <laughs> but we would bring the police side of it into looking at it. I'd always told them if we get retired, we got to try that. So I, I doubt we'll ever do it. But uh, it would be fun to just sit there and watch because I'm not talking like it's no, nobody's getting hurt generally, unless you get some crazy shoplifters that shoot people while they're stealing $30 items. Hello. Um, but it's just so stupid, <laughs> which is why nobody would do a show on it, which is why we would. And I'm sure it would be a show that got very few followers. I'm a teetotaler and I even want one of these coins vexed. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just telling you, you go look at it. It's on display at scotchtestdummies.com and then go to the merch site and uh, you'll see it. And uh, it's perfect. You put it in your pocket. We use them. I don't have mine. I, I, I've got one, but I don't have it on me. Let me show you a, a close idea. All right, so we made coins and a bunch of other whiskey tubers started coming up with these coins as well. So up, oh, upside down, upside down. Um, so what happens is you got Aqua Vitae in Scotland and uh, he came up with his coins. He's got several coins and, um, and you've got uh, no nonsense whiskey. All right, so what happened was we came up with these coins and we said, hey, these aren't our invention. We stole the idea from the military and the police you guys come up with coins and what they work real well as again, maybe not for a teetotaler, but you can put it on top of a Glen Cairn whiskey glass and it kind of holds in those vapors. Um, alcohol, especially high proof alcohol put off a lot of nosing vapors and then you can open and kind of capture that smell a little bit. A lot of tasting anything is how you smell it. And so these, coins that we didn't plan on fit right on top of these. Of course, it wouldn't fit on a rocks glass. Um, we've been joking about making a coin that big, but that was the idea. And then they allow you to put cool things and it's just something cool to have in your pocket. You know, in the military, you'll get, uh, you'll get challenge coins for being in different things. It might be a certain mission, or it could be you did real well at a general's inspection or something. Sometimes you'll get a coin and you're supposed to, legend is you're supposed to keep it in your pocket. 
And then when you're at the enlisted club, somebody pops out a coin, you pop out your challenge coins and uh, blah, blah, blah. But it's really just a cool memento. But again, it's got the lone soldier. It's got our logo. And, uh, and it's, and it's given you that Clyde from, uh, any which way, but loose kind of, uh, salute. Um, what does Matt say? Barbarian Prince is now a free PDF print and play was from task force games originally. Okay. Thank you, Matt. You guys are a wealth of knowledge. Uh, Tom D does Scott play games with you? Great question. So on the show, he mocks me a lot because I'm always bringing in games and occasionally I don't know as much anymore. I love this background. I used to do a lot of whiskey reviews on this other side. Some of you may have seen, which probably holds 500 games. It's, it's uh, purpose built bookshelves meant to hold board games. And I loved it because I'd be doing a whiskey review and people would go, God dang, those are games in the background. Yes. People don't know that there's like 5,000 different types of games made every year. And, um, and so it was a nice different because, um, well, just spurred discussion to your point. He mocks me, but there is a game from, uh, as you guys know, Simon, cool mini or not, um, uh, zombie side. And I, I, he loves zombies. He loves the zombie movies. And I'd said, you got to come over and try this. He's like, okay, we played it. And it was so thematic. The press of the horde is so good. He's like, this is great. I can see playing this with my boys. I said, yes, his boys loved it. So he went all in. I think he's backed all three Kickstarters. So he's got season one, two, and three. Um, and they'll call for it. They got into high school and every once in a while, they'd be like, dad, well, let's spend the day playing zombie side. Boom. And, uh, it's exactly what game is about, especially spending time with family. So he gets it. He does not get it to my level, but he's also more of a collector. Like he'll buy bottles. He'll buy two and not open them. I don't believe in collecting whiskey. Once you open it, it's no longer a collector's item. It's just something you share and drink. Yes. Share and drink. So there you go. Long answer. Next, Bart, I get vibes from you that you start painting in retirement. Maybe. You know, I used to do models. Like I've still got this P38 Lightning 142 scale. I think it's 142, if that's even a scale. And I love it. Uh, it was my favorite fighter, and it still sits uh, back on my desk. And I probably did it when I was 13. Um, I've never been the most patient painter. <laughs> I'll let you know. Nor am I that good at putting on, well, I'm pretty good at putting on the stickers, but uh, uh, maybe I'm just influenced because that is what my similar personality to your grandfather did when he retired from the force. Oh, cool. Um, you know, if I had time on my hands, I wouldn't mind painting. I got to admit, and I think where we're headed as I love the, um, Oh, awaken realms does their, Oh my gosh. What do they call it? They got a great name, like gold wash or something. Come on. Somebody will help me out here. Um, their, their little wash they put on them and it shows all the detail. I love that. And I will pay for that. Um, and I'm not as much of a painter as a player. I can tell you that. Matt, what was your partner modeled after the, the, uh, what the role on Hill street blues? If I had to reference him, boy, it's been a long time since I watched. If I had to reference, uh, Hill street blues, probably the closest would be, um, the, uh, Oh, who I can't remember the names, the black guy and the white guy. What was it? Washington and Rusco or something. Roscoe, um, and how they're good buddies and yet different personalities driving around. And I'd be the wild, dumb one, like the white guy who's, I think he even wears a cowboy hat once. And Bruno would be more like Washington. I can't remember. Washington is probably the detective. Somebody added on that. I love Hill Street Blues, that music in the opening. Um, the idea of, uh, of a two-partner car is just phenomenal. Um, actor... Let me highlight it. Actor James Syking was SWAT leader on the show. Oh, okay. 
no, no, he wasn't like that at all. Uh, the pipe guy and everything. Um, oh, you know, I don't know. It would have been, during our patrol days. It would have been back towards handling calls like the the team I just showed you, and I can't remember their names. Um, I do remember an episode where one of the SWAT guys kind of goes off the rails and shows up to the precinct in his SWAT attire, and he's gone a little far. Um, we've never quite had that, but sometimes the SWAT guys are pretty intense. <laughs> That's not Scott, though. I'll tell you that. Tom D, I'm okay at painting tabletop quality. It's a rabbit hole if you decide to do it. You know, I've bought paints like twice. First of all, I dropped 70 bucks on paints and I'm like, God dang, I could have bought a game for that. Then I paint one thing and I don't even come close to using the paints. And then I get the bug to paint again and I go open up my very expensive paints and they're all dried out. I'm like, yeah, I say curse words. That's what happens to me. And then I go, okay, no more painting, no more painting. Of course, then somebody goes, well, how long were those paints in storage? And I'll go three years and they'll go, oh. And he kind of can't count on anything staying good for three years. <laughs> That's just me. Let me try some of this. So this is barrel proof. That means it's all high proof. It had to be 50% ABV or higher. Many were higher. And um, um, uh, to, to be whiskey, you got to be at least 40% alcohol by volume, which would be 80 proof. Just double it if you're looking for the proof. Real rich nose. These are all bourbons. Woo. Wow, that'll punch you. Very nice. Ah, Magnus is in from Sweden. He's just in from the snow. Love it. Magnus grew up in the mountains of Colorado. I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know if you're just walking in from the snow, but I'm going to imagine you were out snowshoeing. <laughs> Maybe you were snowshoeing. I've actually never snowshoed, but I would like to. Done a lot of downhill skiing, but that's about it. Tons of sledding as a child. Love the snow. So Magnus is in from the snow. Um, um, I think that's about it. When the Rocky Mountain Man comes in, I'll do an unboxing. We'll get to play that at some point in time. Um, if, my, if I enjoy it, my family enjoys it. Um, we'll definitely highlight it beyond just the unboxing to give it a little more um, coverage because I love the idea, the concept of indie games. Um, did anybody answer what the other game from Nate Hayden was? It was the Mushroom Trip or the LSD Tripping game. Somebody's probably on BGG researching it. I'm not seeing it in here, and that's fine. Someday I'll play it. Um, interesting. I don't see anybody that's chimed in and that's fine. Any questions on whiskey? Um, let's see. Judd should be watching Kelly's heroes. Um, I'm going to rewatch it. I've watched it multiple times. I own it and we're going, going to do our next war gamers review. War movies it is going to be Kelly's heroes. I can just tell you the opening crawl of the credits while Clint Eastwood is sitting in a Willis Jeep. I think he's the passenger. He's stuck in a traffic jam. Maybe he's driving. No, he's driving with a German prisoner, an officer. And, um, oh, no enemies here is in time tripper. And he's sitting there and it's just, Nighttime and it's magical. I'm telling you, I love that aspect of it. Got to watch No Enemies Here. He's kissing everybody. It's an Italian thing, I think. <laughs> uh, no, not snowshoeing. Let me bring that up. Not snow snowshoeing. Got back from work. Yeah, I know. When I lived in the mountains, when I joined the army, somebody asked if I rode a horse to work. No, <laughs> or to school. So I'm with you. I know you got in from the snow. Um, what are you driving? Maybe that would be the question. Mercedes? I'm going to guess. Just guessing. We'll see if you respond to that. What do we got here? Dan, Paisan. 
Oh, what do we got here? Trevor's spot on cave evil. Yeah. That's the one that's actually very highly listed. Uh, that's cave evil. There's another one that's all on, but keep going down the list. You'll find the one on the, uh, the, uh, mushrooms or whatever, but, um, I've never even heard of this cave evil and I keep hearing it's actually kind of interesting. And, um, I don't know anything about it. I was like, okay. I kept seeing that when I was, when I was looking at stuff, I forget how I came across, came across Rocky mountain. I think my son's getting home. A VW golf. I should have gone with VW, sir. 99. Good model. I like mushrooms. Actually, uh, um, Dan, the music man, will go out and hunt mushrooms. And uh, here he's very skilled. Dan calls people the crack whores. <laughs> we'll leave that alone. Uh, you Canadian, Canadian man. We were doing a little uh, uh, FaceTime live the other day. It was great. I had great lighting at work. He was texting me, and I'm a slow texter. Big thumbs, big thumbs. So, a dream car is the Skoda Superb. Wow. All right. We will, how long has it been? 36 minutes, head toward 37, 16 people on. We've covered that I'm going to have John Krantz on. Of course, Trevor Just will be back. Um, this Saturday as we do our guest segment, well, it's our guest segment with our fan segment of games you play with your kids. Um, he'll be here for that. And then the following week, I will have John Kranz on from Consim World and also Compass Box doing all his work that he does there. Uh, Jesus Chuzo, do you know what game is Crusade and Revolution? No, not off the top of my head, Jesus. I uh, apologize. Uh, normally I would search that up, but uh, I don't. So I don't own it, but I don't know anything about it either. Um, so I will tell you one thing I love about YouTube, both on the whiskey side and the board game side, is it has shrunk the world for me. Um, on the whiskey side, some of you don't know, we actually got flown out to Ireland, Waterford in particular, to uh, go to the Waterford distilleries and do some film work there. Blast. Guys are doing great stuff there. And then we popped over to Scotland since we were already in the neck of the woods and we met with a bunch of our uh, EU friends and did a organized tasting in Glasgow. That was phenomenal. Then we traveled around, well, we traveled around Isla in the Highlands, and we just had a great time. We're gonna, we want to go back and spend more time in the Highlands. Isla was phenomenal as well. Um, but I got to tell you, at some point in time, there are plenty of awesome distilleries down in uh, in the EU, love the lower, um, all over Europe, and I would love to visit those. And while we do so, I've already had invites from different folks. Hey, stop by when you're in Belgium. I'll show you a great place to eat. Love it. So the shrinking of the world is awesome. Crusade and Revolution is a compass game, right? Excellent. Okay. And Jesus says, yes. And then Trevor says, Spanish Civil War, I own. Haven't played yet. How is the food uh, there in Whiskey Land? Uh, the food was great. I can tell you the best thing though. So when I was in Ireland, one thing with Waterford is they're doing Providence. It's all about them, uh, getting the barley from Irish farmers and they've got them on con contract, I guess there's like 40 of them and they keep the barley separate and they, they bottle them or they store them separately. And then they can use them almost like an ingredient. They've got all different kinds of farms, organic, bio, biodynamic, regular. And we went and uh, we filmed at Seamus Duggan's farm. And Seamus invited us into his home. 
We did this beautiful whiskey mixing with his own spirit that, that Waterford had distilled over multiple different caskings, multiple different years. And he had these scones, which were biscuits. I didn't know. We call them biscuits. And this jam that was right from the farm that his wife made. And here's what I'm telling you. If you go to Ireland, you're not going to be able to drive up to Seamus's house and invite yourself into his kitchen. He invited us in. It was a wonderful place to travel. Just like if I ever go to Canada, I'm going to go see Dan Pincaldi and basically crash in his living room. That's how I will travel. <laughs> I do like that, Danny boy. All right. Uh, let's see. It's a great game, says Jesus. Um, Tom D., I own many games. I haven't yet played. Seems to be the norm. Definitely the norm for me. I was just looking through several. Trevor, you need to get Dan to guest host on your whiskey channel. He seems way interested in booze. He's been on before. He's been on the whiskey channel. And I'm going to forget on the spot your, your uh, I think it's girlfriend, not spouse's name. And it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember because she likes whiskey as well. We've had them on and uh, he does my music for the Scott show as well. So Dan, the music man is awesome. So, but uh, yeah, so Dan's been on. Um, let's see. We're at 41 minutes. If you guys got any questions, send them in. Otherwise I'll wrap it up. Give me some whiskey questions out of the blue. I can hear my boys slowly showing up from school. So I better get up and engage in the family. Um, anything else going on? Like I said, board game wise, I've still got red alert on the table over there. Um, you know, giant cloth mat. Uh, big chunky plastic space battleships and carriers and f little fighters zooming around. Um, I've got to get air or the last hundred yards airborne. I've read that. I've got to get it on the table and played. And then I've got the C3I um, that's got the curse game in it. But I actually am really intrigued. I want to play that. Um, they've got a little like war themed. Firebase Vietnam dice game where you're just playing and trying to uh, trying to. I haven't even read the rules, but it looks neat. It's just a, a quick little solo play. Uh, let's see, Pete or no Pete? Um, I they call me a Pete head, so let me explain that. When I first started tasting whiskey, I did not like peated whiskey. Peated whiskey means they dry the barley with peat moss. It, um, of course, you don't need to do that anymore, but that's how they used to heat homes and heat things and dry out barley. It gives it a sooty, ashy, railroad tie, sometimes tobacco leaf flavor. I hated it at first. All I got was ashtray. I avoided it. No problem. Then I tried Compass Box, which I always confuse with Compass Games. They do what's called Peat Monster. It's fabulous. It's approachable. It's entry-level peat. And after having it, I sought out more and more peat. Lafroig, um, Ardbeg, Beaumore. I could go on and on and on. Brooklati. Um, and I turned into a avid peat head. I love the smoke, the creosote, the ash, the tobacco leaf. Even, dare say, I've described something as an old ashtray before, and people are like, how in the heck do you drink it? There's something about it that hits, hits and it's, and it's in, intensely flavorful. We actually toured Isla, and uh, there's a gal, Jackie, that runs the visitor center at Ardbeg. And we went out on a pier and had a dream moment where she brought out some really unique, rare whiskeys. We sampled them while we interviewed her, my co-host and I. Uh, you can see that on the Scotch Test Dummy show. It's, it's back in 2019 when we did that. Great time. Uh, great for Jackie to give her time. Really cool stuff. So I'm a peat head. That's what a peat head is. I like all whiskey, American whiskey, Canadians. Great. Uh, Dan, if you ever run across lot 40 cast strength, get me some of that. Uh, question is Hamtag going to do videos again? All three of you that is, um, probably not, you know, but you never, I never say no, ever, never say never. Um, so Greg Schmickens, 
Greg is the third in the ham tag. And, um, I think, I don't know. He's, uh, he told me flat out, Hey, I don't have as many games. I don't go through games like you and Judd do. Um, and I don't think he was interested from what he, well, he said he, he doesn't want to just put out boom, 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 numbers. If Greg ever wants to pop in, if Greg wants to say, Hey, I want to do three shows and I want them to be these three shows, I would do that. So, uh, invitations always open. I would love to do that. Um, Judd even. So I try to keep up a uh, active channel, which means I've got to be putting out shows. And Judd said, Hey, my daughter's doing some sports stuff. I want to be there. Yes. I will let this show go back state back, back burner here. If I, my son's doing some sports stuff or school stuff or whatever. Um, so then I thought, well, I want to keep the show going. Um, Part of my idea is I am about five years away from retirement. I would love to do even more gaming stuff and having the show makes that even more fun in my perspective. It's kind of almost part of the gaming hobby for me. Um, but I get Judd needs to do family stuff too. He's like, Hey, we've been doing this for like eight months straight. I'm like, yeah, I've actually been doing it like six years straight. So I get it. Um, but uh, that's why I thought, let me start having some guests on. Um, so, uh, if Greg ever has an idea, Hey, I want to do a single topic. Yes. We'll get everybody over here. We'll do it. Or we'll link up live or whatever we need to do. All I would be more than willing to do that. Greg is awesome. He's one of the best game teachers you can have. If you ever see him at a con, he often has buttons and he often has beef jerky and it's, they're both great. Trevor says in the next online word game convention, uh, how do we get you and pan crust to do an after hours hangout and chat about games and whiskey? We could do that. I got to admit, I'm still kind of getting used to these, uh, online war game conventions. So, but I don't know, I've got the COVID or I've had the COVID. So, uh, I'm ready to get back face to face. Hopefully this, uh, you know, whoever wants the vaccination gets it and hopefully whoever doesn't whatever. And I've got antibodies and hopefully we can break the back of this COVID deal and it quits being a thing. One way or the other, it quits being a thing. I want to get back face to face. I like people. I like hanging out with people in person. Um, John Mag, let me highlight. My wife and I tried to Matt in 12. Great. I'm going to give you a story on that. You introduced your sister. There you go. You know the story. That's exactly where I was going to head. We both really liked it. We tried some others and found she's not a fan of the Pete. A lot of people aren't. I wasn't when I started. Any suggestion on something else to try? Let me give you a Tomatin uh, 14. Um, it is a, a, a port wine cask finish. means it's a little sweeter. It's fruited up a little bit. It's still Tomatin. Tomatins in the Highland, Highlands, they're awesome. If you ever get there, their tours are fabulous. Um, the So you may try that first, John. Try the Tomatin 14. It's still very affordable. Tomatin is a very affordable American uh, purchase for Scotch whiskey. Um, if I was going to send you down another path, I would say it gets a little more expensive, but the Macallan 12 is always good. And the, um, the Glen Morangi. Let me show you. I've got a neighbor gifted me a bottle. We're going to get Boba Fett out of the way here. So it's spelled this way. Glen Morangy. Looks like orangey. Glen Morangy. All right. This is also very light. Um, I haven't had it in a while. Uh, fruity. Um, you get some of that fresh mown hay malted barley is what's used in scotch. Here's what the bottle will look like. Um, and affordable. Uh, this just happens to be in like a, uh, uh, it's a Christmas case that is, let me get it on so I don't drop anything. It's like a giraffe. I think the neighbor meant something there with the giraffe thing. I'm tall like a giraffe. So you can try those. Um, I went on my sister's knitting show 
she made me a Scottish Tam and then I went on her show and walked her and her fans through a tasting. Um, what is really cool about that is she now appreciates whiskey. She used to be mostly a wine person and, uh, she really gets some of the depths in whiskey now and is enjoying that journey as well. So wouldn't Beaumore, wouldn't a Beaumore an entry level whiskey? Um, would it be, it could be, it's still peated. It's in Isla. Uh, I'll be honest with you, but more always comes in as a, a more sooty, ashy, dry, not all of them, but for me, um, not as flavorful, but it's still heavily peated. Isla or, uh, Ardbeg comes in as a little bit more of tobacco flavors, tobacco leaf, um, and not quite as dry. I generally do not steer rookies, and I don't mean that bad, or new whiskey tasters, that's probably a better term, toward peats. Some people love them. I've had people come over and they, I've had a, uh, an officer who loves bourbon. His wife tried Ardbeg 10 and went nuts for peat. So some people love it right out of the chute, but that's not the norm. Um, so. Um, I don't usually steer them that way. It would be like throwing somebody into, oh my goodness, I can't imagine. I don't know. Throwing somebody into a heavy war game when they said that they liked risk and wanted to go a little deeper. It's kind of what I would say. And then all of a sudden you're throwing them into, uh, I don't know, the longest day or something. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, how many maps? Love Greggy rocks. I agree. Um, lot 40 tasted like diesel to me. Get the cast strength. See, you didn't pay attention to any boy. Cask strength lot 40. It's aged a little bit. It's not cut with the water. Chantel, she liked it though. Try the cast strength. I got in trouble. Uh, we were sent the uh, cast strength lot 40. I believe uh, a rep shared it with us. Maybe he was in town. I can't remember. And, um, I got it. And, um, my co-host came over and said, let me try that. I go, it's gone. <laughs> I still hear about that. It was good. I've been trying to get some more of it. The thing is with a cast strength single barrel, as I think what it was, it might've been a one-off. Where do you live? What state? Kansas, Wichita, Kansas to be particular. Been here since 1995. Oddly was born here in 70, moved in 78 to the mountains of Colorado, uh, between Evergreen and Conifer Aspen park and, uh, lived there until I moved down into the Western part of Denver and then moved back to Kansas for the cop job in 1995. John Mogg. Thanks. We'll give those a try. They are phenomenal. I'm telling you, definitely that to Matin 14 pork cask finish. It's got a little bit of a red kind of a plum label. If I remember right, they keep changing the bottle style on me. Uh, but read that and you'll get it. Their 18 is really good too. It's a sherry finish. If I remember right, quite affordable, especially for an 18. Ooh, you're speaking my words here. Gar Gargur says, Elijah Craig and Buffalo Trace for me. Buffalo Trace is one of the best American distilleries. It's probably my favorite. And uh, I say probably because I love a lot of them. But Elijah Craig, their small batch you can get for, what, 22, 24, maybe it's 29 now. Great. Then if you can find it, it used to be on the shelf. Now it'll get allocated, which means they'll hold it out or put it behind the shelf or whatever. The Elijah Craig barrel proofs are my favorite whiskey of all times. They'll do an A release and like March, they'll do a B release sometime in the summer and they'll do a C release sometime in the fall. They are high proof, barrel proof bottles and they're unbelievable. I call them the bottle of wow, but the regular small batch is good too. And I will send you down another bourbon road. If you like um, bourbon, try the wild turkey rare breed. It's like 54 bucks. Wild turkey does amazing stuff, but the rare breed is like velvet brown sugar. It is good. Wooden top on it as well. 
Uh, Tom D moved back to Kansas because Broncos stink. Actually, uh, when I was here, the Broncos won back to back Super Bowls. Hard to do. We're not too good right now, though. But uh, I still like the Broncos, my friend. I like them even when they suck. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, I will end this show once we hit 60 minutes. So we got five minutes left. Your last chance to get questions in. Don't forget Rocky Mountain Man. I will at the very least do an unboxing or an unbagging of the folio game. Um, then we'll play it and see what it's like. Um, again, it's supposed to be kind of in the style of source of the Nile from Avalon Hill. And I've been wanting to try that. I hear it's a little bit different in what they do, but I've never played it. So I don't know, but that is what intrigued me. They have another game or Nate Hayden has another game called world war three. Eh, I'm not sure. We'll see how this one goes. Tom Dio man, uh, thought you were a chief fan. Sorry. Just assumed. Nah. You're all right. Um, uh, I don't mind the Chiefs. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Raiders. I don't like Raiders. Uh, when you visit Sweden, I like the way you talk, first of all, Magnus. I'll buy you a bottle or two of Swedish whiskey. I love the way you talk. See, you just improved it. Love it. Yes, I would love to get by Sweden. Love to. We need to do a European romp. The Scotch Test Dummies are successful enough that I think we could afford to do that and bring our spouses as camera crew and uh, and make a road trip out of it. There would be definite whiskey fans and board game fans that we would stop and meet along the way. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Okay, that's inside. Magnus, okay, Trevor, everybody's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Top whiskey from Asia, easy. Japanese whiskey, although Taiwan's killing it. Cavalon, go check out Cavalon whiskey if you get a chance. If you visit there, we had a fan that that sent us some bottles after they actually went to Cavalon in Taiwan, and unbelievable. Some of the bottles you can buy there uh, that they don't sell are just unbelievably rich and fruity and they age quicker. I guess the temperatures, uh, things age quicker there. So try Cavalon from Taiwan. If you get a chance, um, Japanese whiskey has been hard to come across. I had a Yamazaki 12. Then I had a Yamazaki. I still got a Yamazaki 18, which is Sherry finished. Now it's like crazy prices. Um, they ran out basically. Uh, but there's tons of things coming out of Japan, um, I can't remember. There's another name. I can't remember from Japan. I will also tell you that India has both Paul John, which you can see right there. Boom. That's their Christmas edition. Paul John whiskey is really good. And they have Amrut. Amrut, if you get a chance and you see the Amrut fusion, it is probably my favorite. They did something, which I can't remember now off the top of my head, where they did a blending of scotch single malt with their own blend, and it was fabulous. Uh, I think I tried it in 2014. I bought it blind for 70 bucks and was blown away, and it really opened my mind to whiskeys from around the world. You can also get some great whiskeys from Tasmania down in Australia, um, Sullivan's Cove, if you get a chance, always check them out. Um, the metric system. Habiki is very good. Yes, Magnus. Habiki is very good. Centuri is more of an owner. They they release all kinds of things. Um, they are huge. So they own, it's like Beam. I mean, they just, uh, Centuri Beam, actually. They even bought Beam. Um, but yes, John Mogg, uh, we like Centauri Toki Toki. I don't know if I've had that. I'm probably saying it wrong. Also like their Gin Roku. Very cool. I haven't had really, uh, well, I haven't had either of those. So, but uh, what I love is how whiskey is now trending very strong worldwide. And by the way, America is working on, you can get a lot of American single malts. There's not a legal category yet, but they're working on it. 
And uh, I like the idea. It still means anybody could stay outside that legal category, but I would love to have an American single malt with a category similar to what bourbon is. A lot of people don't know that bourbon has to be, has to be at least 51% corn. Then it can have different makeups and it's mash bill, it's recipe. It's got to be in a virgin oak barrel, never had anything else in it. Um, and, uh, and it's got to age, if it's going to be st- called straight, it's got to be at least two years old. So it's got some legal rules to it, but, uh, lots, lots of good stuff out there. So I will let you guys go. Thanks. Um, Kabuki. Thank you. And boom and boom. And I will sign off. Thank you guys. Salancha. And look for uh, Trevor Saturday, John Krantz the following week, and I'll do Rocky Mountain Man whenever that folio comes in. Um, And again, the company, if I can get it to pull up, everything went to sleep, needs my face. The company is, and it's not going to pull up, um, the company is Pit of Infinite Shadow.